a windy one. Apologies guys, I did forget the um, wind protector for my microphone. So if it's really roaring, I do apologise for that. And to be honest, with all this wind, I think we're going to find a bit of shelter to fire up the firebox stove and maybe get a little, um, get a boil on, get a coffee going. Jax is loving it. Ain't you, buddy? You can see where they chopped the trees down before here, where they've managed the land. Because look, there's all baby conifers. Sorry, it's windy, but all baby conifers just planted in a line along there. So this was all forest, they chopped it down, replanted, and now because it's a conifer, it'll just grow back really fast, you know, 20, 20 years or so, this will be a forest again. I wish I had a long lens. There's a bird of prey sat on that fence. Just, wait for it, there, bird of prey. Let's see how close we can get before we, it's a buzzard, it's a real big buzzard. You might see him fly off in a minute. Here he goes, he's twitchy because Jax is there. Thanks, Jax. Can we get it? He's still there. About to go. He might go for Jacks actually. Stick to the tree line. There he goes, there he goes. Big buzzard man. Awesome bird. Here, there he goes. Thanks Jax. Yeah, you did that. Wait. Hey, wait, wait. Uh. Boy. Go on now. Go on. Ready for those cold overnighters. The grass, I mean, the grass is starting to change colour. If I'll show you. Look, you can see the, the grass and the bracken starting to change over there. You can see the bracken's changed colour. It's died right back now which is fine, that's, that's normal for this time of year. It's a great tinder to use in the winter, I find bracken, especially when it's, when it's obviously dry, it's a real good for sort of flash tinder. Good for a flint and steel. But, you know, other than that, the grass is still green. October, still green, what's going on? What is going on? Lovely peaceful woodland, now here comes Jax. He knows I'm not with him, look. <laughs> here he comes, he's scared, he's scared. You don't want to go back on your own. <laughs> oh, good boy. I've just spotted some really cool shelters here. Look at this. Someone has been hard at it. Look at that one over there. Let's, let's go and have a look at that. Look at this. That is awesome. Fair play. Someone has been watching far too much TA Outdoors. That's a decent little shelter. Obviously kids have come and made it, I guess. Either way, I'm impressed. I mean, there's plenty of room inside this. They've even got their fake campfire thing down here. I might even have a fire up a coffee here. This is cosy. So, I'm just going to use the firebox today, guys. Reason being is, well, you heard me earlier, it's 19 degrees still. Everywhere's pretty dry. So I don't really want to be having some huge campfire and risk burning down the forest. Not worth it. So, I'm just going to use the firebox. Jax is just behind the camera being a terror, as usual. Last time I used this was actually that three day overnighter. Uh, down at the coast, that's probably why it's nearly rusted together. But they're really handy. Probably put it there, clearing it, clear all the duff, the pine needles. 
just to be safe. It's got its own ashtray, but it ain't worth it. Ground. I'm just going to collect some dry sticks. It's all pine, so it should burn pretty easy. It's all very dry, he says. There's just sticks everywhere. I won't need a lot to, to boil water. That, that's well enough. Let's process it down a bit. That's, that's my stick. My stick. Jack Snow. Oi. <laughs> you monkey. This is for the firebox. Stealing my sticks. Yeah, you little monkey. Leave, leave. <laughs> nice try. You leave these. Look, I gave you one. I gave you one. There you go. There you go. That's your one. These are my ones. Leave those alone. There we go. Yeah, look, you can have that one. I'm just processing them down to about that size, guys, because you don't want them much taller than the box, to be honest. So I'd say literally six to eight inches. That's what I tend to do anyway. Everyone's got their own way of doing it. That's just my way of doing it. That one's a bit rotten. No. I know what you're trying to think, mate. Leave it, there, there you can have that bit. Okay. There. Uh, get it all prepared. I think we're there. Boys and girls, we are there. Now I'm just going to make a feather stick with a knife. That's, that should probably be all I need to boil boil a pot of water. And then Jax, if Jax doesn't steal it, hey, 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 oi! That's not cool. That is not cool. Note to self, when collecting firewood with a dog, Collect twice as much as necessary. Got a new bag actually I'm using, which I'll probably let you guys know about in a different video. What do you want? That's too big here. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, just looking for a long straight bit to do a feather stick with. I really need to get a new blade for this slap lander. It's very blunt. Very blunt. That's one. One more piece. Jack's in the way. Thanks, dude. Thanks, man. Loads of people have different ways of doing feather sticks, guys. This is just my way of doing it. I tend to obviously place the stick on the ground. I have it on the outside of my leg, here. Away, away. I have it on the outside of my... <laughs> He's gone and sulked and now stolen more of my firewood. Uh, so yeah, I tend to have it on the outside of my leg here so that any slippage with a knife is just going to go that way away from my body. Just basic knife safety, really. Then I start at the top and make sure you get a straight piece of wood. I tend to try and remove any outer bark with the. No, no, away now. And then start really gently, really gently. And as you start coming down, then you can get sort of thicker. Doesn't necessarily work the first time all the time.
and then each time you've done a curl, put a slight twist on it. Sometimes the curls fall off, it doesn't really matter as long as you've got enough on, on the actual stick itself. Yeah, give it a slight twist each time so that you're basically curving on a ridge, not a flat piece of wood. Slowly come up the stick each time so that you build your feathers up closer towards you and make more of a kind of tree effect really, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. Any curls that fall on the floor are not a loss, you can throw them in the firebox or on your campfire just to help get it going. So that's that's a tight enough bunch. Look, that's not a perfect feather stick by any means. Leave. Leave. You leave. That's not a tight enough feather stick. Leave it. Leave it, Jax. That's look, that's not perfect guys, but it will work when I put a ferro rod to it, providing you leave it alone. Stop touching it, Jax. Go find your own one. Find your own feather stick. Yeah, good boy. Go find your own stick. Look, what do you... Look, there's one for you. Here. There, look. Get it. Good boy. Just trying to get a flat, flat edge first to then create a ridge. But it's partially rotten wood, so it's not coming up very well. Just to prove that your feather sticks don't have to be right towards the end and you can still like them. So firstly, clear off a few sparks and it's going to be fine. I like to hold my fire steel against the, the stick like this sometimes, it just makes you get a bit more leverage. Doesn't always work but I found it has for me recently and then shower it with some sparks. There we go. Oh, oh, is that going to light? Is that going to light? Just turn that feather stick over. Let some air in. Plonk him in. Get said sticks. Jacks are going to be in the way now, mate. This is the tentative phase, as I like to call it. Jacks away. He wants to be naughty, that's his problem. Oopsie. Then we just need a few of those sticks to light. Where's he gone? Jacks. What's the problem? If those of you guys out there with dogs will know, half the time you've got to watch where they are and watch what you're doing at the same time. So it doesn't matter if that I'm building the fire from the sort of top down here, that's okay. That is okay. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. I treat him every time he comes. Good boy. Good boy. It's all right. Yeah, good boy. He's still a puppy, Jax. He's only not even one and a half yet, so he's still classed as a puppy. But I always, always treat him every time he comes back to me. Like you reinforce that, and he should always come back. Okay, he's on there. Handles as close to the edge as possible. And then to speed up the boiling process, get the lid on. And then, hopefully you guys, yeah, you should be able to see this. And you just feed some sticks in the side here. Either of the sides of the, the firebox, you just feed it in. Nice and easy, and the heat, the heat should actually make those sticks go. So we have French vanilla, caramel, hazelnut, mocha, black, and classic. Now, which shall it be? Uh, well, I've had, obviously, classic coffee before. I've had black coffee before. I've had mocha before. Can't say I've had hazelnut caramel or French vanilla. It's between these three that I'm going to give a go. And I reckon 
the French vanilla is going to be a good one. I have had a vanilla latte though. Oh, it's a tough one. It's so tough. It's got all the details and the nutri nutritional and, and sort of calories and stats on the back of it. Which doesn't bother me too much, but it might for some of you guys. And this is what they look like. This is why they're great for camping and hiking, because it's literally just an instant coffee and everything's in there. Just one cube. Takes up zero space in your backpack. And what you could do is get a load of flavors and then just take them out of the box. So you don't have to take all the boxes and just have a wad, you know, a packet of these basically. So the water's boiled now. You can see the steam coming up. And I'm just gonna plonk this in there and stir and enjoy. Before that, I've got to find Jax. Where is he? There he is. Hey buddy! Hey buddy! Whoa, 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 hey buddy! Hey buddy! Good boy, sit. You wait there. You good boy, ain't ya? Oh, I'll give you some pips for that. Yeah, good boy, good boy. There you go. Go on now, go on now. Okay, I think. We're cool enough. In. I haven't brought my cookser with me actually. I might do it on the next hiking trip, but let's give it a smell. Oh, that smells incredible. There is the cube, guys. Very small, very compact. It's basically like a, a double sugar cube, like you get the sugar cubes, the brown sugar cubes and the white sugar cubes. Instant coffee. In it goes. It's changing colour already. Give it a stir. Oh, look at that. Whew, that was fast. You know what, I can't even feel the coffee thing already, guys. I think it's already gone. There's a tiny bit left, I can just about feel. Obviously, I brought water for Jax. What I tend to do, sometimes he drinks out of my hand, but usually in my bag somewhere, I'll have my 10 centimeter zebra billy, which I keep in this pouch, and then He's had a lot of dry biscuits and dry kibble where I've been treating him. But if you guys have dogs, this is a great way of uh, giving them a drink. On the Generally with a billy can, <coughs> leave it. You've got your lid here, you're kind of, well, it's, it's more like a saucer, sort of a, a frying pan, really. He knows, that's, that's why he's waiting now. He knows that's where his water goes in. So I always carry that and obviously extra water for Jacks. Here you go, go on then. And then make sure he's got plenty of water. Good boy. Good boy. That's yours. Yeah, good boy. You good boy, ain't you? Yeah, buddy. You good boy. Oh. Look, there's yours, buddy. You can enjoy your water and I'll enjoy my coffee. I think the coffee, there's a plane flying around somewhere, so apologies, guys. Cheers, guys. Vanilla coffee. Thanks to Jiva Coffee for sending me these. It smells incredible. Hopefully it tastes as it smells. That's really good. <laughs> That's really good, I'm quite impressed. I'm uh, much more impressed than a normal instant coffee, actually. I thought, I didn't think it would be that good. And thank you to the guy who left me the shelter to relax under. The child or the adult, whoever made it. I, uh, I'm very grateful. <laughs> Here he comes. Here. Good boy. Good boy. We're getting there, aren't we, with your training, mate? We're getting there, buddy. Yeah, you get those. You get those. Every time you come back, you get them. Every time. You're gonna be huge if you keep coming back at this rate. Come here a minute. Whoa, let's see to the camera. Guys, this is my dog. If you haven't seen him before, his name is Jax. J A W X. He is almost fully grown now. This will be his full size. He's a Jack Russell Terrier, or a JRT for short, what they call them. Uh, they were specifically bred for hunting. The Parsons Terrier was kind of the original Terrier, um, and they were bred for hunting. They were bred for the hunt. They would go down rabbit holes, badger holes, things like that, flush out the animal, and then the hunter will be waiting there at the end to capture the animal, or other dogs as well, bigger dogs, uh, to help capture the animal 
Uh, they are very, very protective dogs. They protect their owners to death, really. So anyone who comes up to me who he doesn't know, he will bark at. He's not necessarily aggressive. A lot of people mistake them for being very aggressive dogs. Uh, that's not the case. I think with most dogs' aggression, you know, they're like, oh, it's an aggressive breed, it's an aggressive breed. I don't really agree with that, really. I think it's, it's all down to the owner that makes their dog aggressive. Um, I do believe that, you know, some dogs are naturally more uh, possessive than other dogs. You know, they're more protective, but not necessarily aggressive. I think it's a term that's sort of thrown around quite a lot. And personally, I think it's all down to poor dog ownership. But um, yeah, he's a year and coming up. He's not even a year and a half yet. He's just over a year. And he's a tricolor, which means he's got three colors. He's got his white fur. He's got his brown near, around his face and his eyes. And he's actually got some black on his belly, a bit on his belly. And actually just around his eyes, almost like mascara. But he wants to go now, so I'll let him go. He's a short-haired dog, obviously. He's got short hair. Um, not so much of a winter dog. He doesn't have a long, thick coat. So you, you can imagine it's like my hair here. Like, I feel the cold here. He would feel it in the winter because he's only a short-haired dog. Uh, they come in different sort of coats, the Jack Russells. You get, like, wire, wire-haired, which is like like a Brillo. Like, wire It is what it is. It's wiry. Like, you get your wired haired You get your long-haired. Um, but the Terrier family in general are incredibly loyal dogs absolute characters you will be in for a hell of a lot of work trying to look after them but absolute character dogs and his average his breed's average lifespan would be about 12 years probably 12 to 10 to 12 years average um they live up to dad's my dad's had them up to i think 19 maybe even 20 or definitely 17 18 19 my previous dog that I had with my family, which was sort of dad's dog, a family dog, he lived to 14, I believe. So they generally get into their teens, sort of mid-teens, which is a great age, and small dogs do tend to live a little bit longer than larger dogs. This is amazing. This is a really, really nice coffee. I'm glad I chose the vanilla one and not one that I sort of had before. Mmm. Lovely. I like the fact that the cubes are compact. You can just put them in your backpack and and you can select which range. They've got a great range of coffee, which is awesome. And it's all Colombian coffee, and I like my Colombian coffee in general. So I think they're based in New York, I believe, Jiva. But um, yeah, thanks very much, guys, for sending me this. I really appreciate it. The thing their breed is good for is digging. As you can see, Jax loves digging. Dig it. Dig it out. Dig it. Good boy. Dig it. Dig it. Dig it. Dig it. And he actually digs on command as well. It's just, it's in their nature to dig. Getting darker now, guys, so gonna pack up the bag and head on off because Jack's just getting a bit restless. It's cooled down now. Coffee's lovely, very nice. Gotta leave no trace though. it down that's cooled down now I always keep a little bit of extra water just for the ground that it was on soak it a bit uh, chill hacks, mate, you're getting so deep there. It's enough. It's enough. <laughs> too much, man. Too busy. You are too busy. I give it a rub with some dirt and moss. It comes in a Cordura bag anyway, which is here. And then that just protects everything. It goes in this, this is the Cordura case, sorry. That's like cloth and the Cordura, Cordura outside case. And that's it, it literally packs to nothing. Jax is out of the water. You ready to go, mate? You look like you're ready to go. I try to keep everything in protective sort of uh, bags and covers just to really prolong the life of your backpack and stop your backpack getting really muddy. So, for example, that, there's the billy can cover. 
and that just sits in there. Dry box, I try and keep this down my back, near my back to keep it all rigid. And then that's had a clean as best as can. This nesting cup and canteen go in the side pouch of my packs. Along with that and my spoon. Where's my spork? There it is. My spork tucks in. So I've kind of got my drink and coffee and everything in one side. So I can easily access it. And then tinder pouch in the top. And that's that. There's still loads of room because this is a 35 litre pack. So it can act as a day pack and an overnight pack, which I will be using fairly regularly now. But we cinch that down, cinch that down there. And there we go, we're good to go. Good to go. Well, there we go, guys. Left no trace. You wouldn't know I was there. Well, you'd know Jax was there, but thanks to whoever built this. Very kind person. Let's go exploring. Where is he? Hey, this way. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Go on. Come on! <laughs> Come on! You can't find me. I'm over here. There we go. When I go hiking with Jax on, on like a day hike, I tend to obviously have his lead just in case there's other people or things around that he might chase. Just as shortly, which I wrap around my neck like that so that if I need to quickly hitch him up, I can just do that. But as well as that, I take this whistle with me. It's always around my neck. Um, and this is a stag antler whistle and it works really well with Jax. Obviously I can whistle myself and he tends to come, but with, the whis with this whistle, it, goes, it carries much further. And it's just in case he goes right into the distance. I'm watching him now. Like, I'll show you. He's just... See him? He's there, watch. Here he comes. There we go. And that's just one blast of this whistle. And he's, he's here, straight by my side. So I just carry that for when he goes really long distances, a bit too far, and I, I'm not too confident where he's going. Or especially being a small dog, he's in that undergrowth, you know, that long grass where I just can't see him. Um, it's handy he's really white fur, but when I can't see him, I always blow this just in case. And he tends to come first time. I'll try it again. He's only just there. Uh, where is he? Here he comes. Miles away. Here. <laughs> He's trying to make his way round. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Look at that. You're out of breath because you ran miles away. Now I'll give you some treats. Yeah, good boy. I carried him in my cargo pocket here. Just for ease of use to give him. There's a good boy. Right, don't run off. No, this way, this way. This way. Go on up there. Well, guys, made it to the forestry track now. Um, which means I'm not too far from where I need to get to. We've walked quite a while today, probably about three and a half, four hours, but I haven't filmed the whole walk because it'd just be a four hour video of me walking and talking, which would be pretty dull. But we've done a good walk. We're low on water. He's ready to go home. He's getting tired. He's had his food. He's had a lovely walk. He's enjoyed it. It's been a great hike. Thanks very much for watching this part of the video. Hopefully there's going to be a second part. If not, I'll see you soon.
Hey guys, you join me on a different day. Uh, I've just been for a nice long walk, testing out the old backpack, and I found a little spot here in a completely different woodland that I was in last time. Last time was kind of more of a coniferous sort of woodland, with loads of Scots pine trees and the odd silver birch. This is much more of a sort of ancient woodland really, and there's plenty of birch around. I can see like autumn's coming a bit earlier in this, this particular woodland, like there's loads of birch leaves that have come off that are golden yellow. And looking above, I can see them starting to go really yellow now. So it seems that in this woodland, autumn is uh, is a bit is coming a bit earlier. So it's strange. I don't know, man. It's strange. Maybe it's global warming or something like that. Where, <laughs> but I don't know. These trees definitely seem a lot more a uh, lot more yellow. Anyway. So the plan is I'm going to get a fire going. A um, bit more bushcrafty style this time. No firebox. The ground's nice and dry. Uh, it, but it's also not that peaty ground, so I don't mind having a fire on it because it's not so uh, soft. So we'll get fire going, have a drink, and just chill and enjoy this lovely autumn day. First thing I'm going to do is get my the blowpipe I've been using recently in its leather sheath, just get that around my neck. Get prepared basically, undo the old belt and get the, the nice sheath on my belt so that I'm all ready to collect some wood, process some wood and get a fire going. Barco Laplander or folding saw in my cargo pocket and now I'm ready to just get my fire going that's all I need to get my fire going I do have my tinder pouch but I don't think I'm going to need it really because it's so dry the wood I could just make some feather sticks and get it going so this looks as good as airy as any loads of sticks around all looks pretty dry I just want to get the sort of fire zone not too near the tree roots so I don't burn any tree roots and damage any trees at least you know a meter and a half maybe two meters away from the trees just protect them a bit but it's these leaves it's these dried leaves that are going to be the ones that could catch fire so just clearing those out the way really there's so much dry wood around i'm going to have no problem getting fire going Look at the lovely autumn colours on the floor here, on the forest floor. Definitely my favourite time of year, the fall. Absolutely love it. Nice fresh mornings, fresh evenings. It's just a really nice time of year. So this wood is pretty rotten. As you can see, just snaps quite easily. Probably going to give me a really smoky fire. This is what I really want, as you can see here. This is dead standing, so it's dead down at the base, it's completely dead, but it won't be too rotten. There we go, take it over to the fire area, and that can be processed down now. So all I'm going to do here is, is using this base bit, this is, look at the, the bark just peeling off this. This will light so easily, but it's going to go on the base of the fire. So I'm just going to chop off this bottom bit, purely because that's the most rotten part, and it will smoke, as you can see, and then... I want about four pieces for the base of the fire. Three. Four, I'll do one more for luck, five pieces. There you go. That's gonna make the base of my fire, just over here. So what I'll do with these, <coughs> Make a nice, make sure it's on a nice flat surface, which it is. And actually, that unevenness will just help the air flow under anyway, so it's not too bad. So I've got my fire lay. I'm gonna go and collect some tinder now, and then some kindling. Well, this is convenient. Obviously, I'm in a birch woodland, so there's plenty of this stuff around. It doesn't come off loads, but that's. If you, can you guys see how thin that is? If I put some ferro rod sparks to that. That is literally going to go up so well. It's 
so satisfying when you get a real good strip of birch bark. Only the bushcraft firelighting guys will appreciate how nice that is to get a real long strip of bark. Okay, so I've got my Y stick here. Just gonna obviously chamfer it into a point and just make a little stake of it so that it will go in the ground. It's nice and even, a little bit there I can get rid of for aesthetic purposes, but there's a few knots that'll do. Just get this back in the ground like it was about there. And this stick should, back here, stop it <laughs> like so. Hope you guys can see that. Should. In fact, I need to bring it, you can adjust the height by bringing the stick forward and back. But now what I do is take this away and actually I'm going to pull this out and take that away and leave the stick there because I don't want to burn this stick. Right, it's fire lighting time. Okay, I'm going to try and show you the whole process again. It sounds like there's roadworks nearby, I'm not too far from a road, so apologies if you hear roadworks or foresty vehicles. Um, I'm just going to peel this, this big bit of bark into strips so it burns a bit better. Because it's got a lot of barks, a lot of uh, inner mud still on it. Better. Right, got my bunch of curls, coils. Whoa, there we go. Try and get the bigger curls done as well, because this is going to go through fairly quick. As that's doing that, get your real thin, I've got the brace there at the back, don't want to put it out. Which is nearly going out, whoa. Uh -oh. Any spare pieces of bark use? Very tentative now. And then these ones you can make a sort of teepee around the edge. There's so many different ways of, of lighting a fire. This is just one of them. Try and get that teepee going. And what I tend to do is once I've got a good amount like that, I'll force oxygen in it with the blowpipe. So, blowpipe here on my neck, pull it out.
And that's it, three, three blows. So what I've done, if you can see this guys, I've made three holes, one, two, three. So I can adjust this pot hanger as per the holes to make it, hole number one goes much lower like that, hole number three, much higher back up here. So just a little tip, you can dig different holes at different distances to adjust your pot hanger. So it's an adjustable one. And I'm gonna go with that one, I think. In fact, I can go a bit lower now. There we go. So just so you can guys so you guys can see there's the notch on the bail arm or the bail of the billy can. That's the level over the fire I've got it. Pot hanger goes down, there's the Y stick and the different holes to adjust it. That stays back there. And the weight actually you don't even have to dig this Y stick in very deep. The weight of that billy can pulling down on it just keeps it in the ground. So a couple of spaces, if you want to raise that up, make it higher, then you move that Y stick back there and it angles the stick up higher. So little tip, if you guys are interested, make a few holes with it first, then you can raise or lower it. I've got my extra firewood there and it's coffee time. So the other day with Jacks, I had the French vanilla, that was awesome. And I did say I've already had obviously black coffee and I've had classic coffee and mocha. So I'm gonna go for, I might go for two coffees today guys, just so it's fair that I've actually had a good taste of the range. So I'm gonna go for hazelnut and caramel. And today, I remembered the Cooksa. So Cooksa is like a, an old Scandinavian drinking vessel. Uh, this one is actually handmade by a fella called Will Canavan and his business is Whitehead Custom Crafts. He is incredible. He's made this with gouges, um, you know, an axe, obviously, a knife, just amazing. And this is spalted beach. You can see that spalted effect. It is amazing. It's got a little hole for carrying there. It's got a toggle. I put the red deer out the toggle on there at the end. But that's what I'm going to have my coffee in today. And obviously the other one I'll have to have in, if I can get it open, my stainless steel cup which isn't quite the same effect so hazelnut is gonna go in the cookser I think uh, I don't know how many cubes there are per I think there's five cubes per box I'll pop a link in the video description for you guys to check out Jiva but this one is hazelnut and let's have a smell oh, oh it's incredible that's going in the cookser Keep my rubbish, don't leave any litter people. And then caramel. Oh, I bet this is good caramel. Double coffee, I'm gonna have such a caffeine rush. Oh. Oh wow, that could be that could be top. So guys remember, hazelnut in that one, caramel in that one, don't let me forget. Oh, I'll tell you what that caramel smells awesome. Sounds like we're boiling boys and girls. I know I've got to keep saying girls because the girls do watch us. But look at the lid wobble. We're boiling, baby. We are definitely boiling, guys. What I'm going to do is lift the stick up, twist it to the side, lower it down. And, oh, I'm excited. Get in on this cook, so this is the oh, I've forgotten already hazelnut. Oh, oh wow! Oh, that smells incredible. Ooh. If you guys are coffee lovers, honestly, I'm I'm I don't usually have instant coffee. I'm a I'm a grind the bean down type guy. I don't use instant coffee at all, really. I, the only time I use it is when I'm out camping because I do have a grinder that I can uh, crush the beans down, but 
you know, when you're filming guys, it's a lot of effort to do, so it's an extra thing to do. I, I will film it at some point, but at home I use a French press. It's my favourite way of having coffee. Let's pour the other one. Oh, just enough. Okay guys, we're gonna try the hazelnut first because the cooks are, the thing with wood cooks is just they do cool down really quick. The wood just saps the heat out of the drink, so. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's really nice. Could be because I treat my cookser with walnut oil anyway, so it's got that nutty flavour, obviously being hazelnut mixed with walnut oil, but... That's really nice. Slightly bitter, I'd say, towards the end. Bit of a bitter aftertaste, but... That is lovely. That is lovely. Time for the caramel. That did smell good. Still smells incredible. That's lovely. I actually prefer that to the hazelnut, and hazelnut was nice. Hmm. Can't beat a peaceful afternoon in the woods, especially at autumn. I encourage you guys to get out there. There'll always be a time you'll think, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too tired, you know, haven't got enough time. Just honestly, I promise you, an hour in the woods does you so much good. If you guys get the opportunity to get out in the woods at any time, even for just an hour, take it up. You don't have to have a fire. You can have your little gas stove and have a coffee. You can even bring coffee in, in like a heated flask. Just sit down and enjoy it. You will find within 15 minutes you'll feel so relaxed. Woodland therapy. That's what everyone needs, a bit of woodland therapy. Especially those politicians, eh, Dad? <laughs> Doing the whole leave no trace part now. Probably the most important part if you're having a fire. Don't leave it in a mess. Wait for it to go out, put some water on it, and cover it up. Otherwise we just get a bad name for ourselves. Make it look like no one was there. Guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank Jiva Coffee for sponsoring this video. Uh, you do have some really tasty coffee, guys. Thanks very much. 
Um, and do you subscribers if you want to go and check them out I'll pop a link in the video description thanks so much for watching hopefully I'll see you soon I've got plans to do an overnighter uh, in about two days time so plenty to do and I'll see you then guys thanks very much